murderer, huh? Who's this turkey think he is? Mickey Mantle? Rifle one. Welcome to a new episode of RT Essentials. I'm Mark Ellis. And you know, life is a lot like baseball. It's filled with victories and defeats, the highest of highs, the lowest of lows, boring moments and exciting ones, and a whole lot of hot dogs. At least if you're me. So maybe that's why you can tell so many interesting stories about life through what's going on on that little patch of grass and the dirt and the diamond. There's some pretty great baseball flicks that have been made throughout the years. And you may find it hard to believe, but they don't all star Kevin Costner. I promise but a few of them do, and they're really good. And we'll talk about those as well, because today on the show, it's the best baseball movies, batter up. Moneyball. Any other team wins the World Series, good for them. They're drinking champagne, they get a ring. But if we win, on our budget, but this team, we'll change the game. And that's what I want. Getting the ball rolling with this list is the 2011 baseball drama Moneyball. The film is based on the 2003 book Moneyball, The Art of Winning an Unfair Game by Michael Lewis about Oakland A's GM Billy Bean's attempts to assemble a competitive team in 2002. Brad Pitt stars as Bean, who wakes up one day with an epiphany that conventional wisdom in baseball is all wrong. So with a shoestring budget, he starts to reinvent his team by trying to outsmart the richer baseball clubs. He teams up with Ivy League graduate Peter Brand, played by Jonah Hill, and they begin recruiting overlooked players whom the scouts have labeled as flawed but still have game-winning potential. One of those players is Scott Hatterberg, played by Chris Pratt, with the actor shedding 30 pounds to win the role after being told he was, and this is quote, too fat. But I guess it worked out since he would go from baseballer to star lord to dinosaur whisperer over the next four years. Steven Soderbergh was once attached to the project and planned to make it a semi-documentary, including interviews with real athletes and with real players and coaches playing themselves. But ultimately, directing duties went to Bennett Miller, known for films like Capote and later Foxcatcher. Jombie's on base percentage was 477. Damon's on base, 324. And Almeida's was 291. Add that up and you get. Do you want me to speak? What not point are you get? 1092. Divided by three. It's 364. That's what we're looking for. Filming took place in the summer of 2010 at the Oakland Coliseum and in Dodger Stadium in LA, which was dressed up to look like a very different ballpark. The film was nominated for six Academy Awards, including Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Actor for Brad Pitt, and Best Supporting Actor for Jonah Hill. And it marked the first baseball film to be nominated for a Best Picture Oscar since Field of Dreams in 1989. If that's not on this list, I might just leave the studio. The consensus from critics is that director Bennett Miller, along with Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill, take a niche subject and turn it into a sharp, funny, and touching portrait worthy of baseball lore. And fun fact, the baseball player Mark Ellis appears in the movie. Bull Durham. Fastball. Stepping up to the plate next on this list is the 1988 classic baseball rom-com, Bull Durham. The film stars Kevin Costner as an aging minor league ball player, Crash Davis, who's brought up from another team to help guide a young pitcher named Luke Lelouch, played by Tim Robbins, who struggles with maturity issues. But both of them become involved with Annie Savoy, played by Susan Sarandon, a poetry-loving groupie who tends to find a new guy on the team every year. The film is partly based on the minor league baseball experiences of the film's writer and director Ron Shelton, who played after college for a couple teams between 1967 to 1971. He went on to become known for the many films he's made about sports like White Men Can't Jump and Tin Cup, which also stars Kevin Costner. Speaking of Costner, he's a former high school baseball player and got cast in the part partly because of that natural athleticism. He was able to hit two home runs while the cameras were rolling. Okay, just stop with that. Get close, baby. You got it. You got it, One more, baby. One more. You got it. All right, he's got to throw the deuce now, okay? He's got to waste one. Stay back and wipe that silly grin off his face. 
Come on, bring it. Bring it. Hey, Jesus Christ! What was that? What the hell was that? Okay, babe. Son of a bitch throws hard. Meanwhile, Tim Robbins was cast as Nuke against strong objections from studio executives who reportedly wanted Anthony Michael Hall in the role, which would have been different. Since baseball films were not considered commercially appealing at the time, every studio passed on the project except for Orion Pictures, who said it estimated $9 million budget. And of course, it went on to gross more than $50 million in North America alone, which is called a home run in the movie biz. I'm assuming. I, I don't know if they use baseball nomenclature. The film has been ranked as the number one greatest sports movie of all time by Sports Illustrated, among many other best of lists in the world of sports. And it was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay, but lost out to Rain Man. The critics' consensus is that Kevin Costner is at his funniest and most charismatic in Bull Durham, a film that's as wise about relationships as it is about minor league baseball. The bad news bears. All the season long you've been laughed at, crapped on. Now you got a chance to spit it back in their faces, or what do you do? You're out there like a bunch of dead fish, not listening, bonehead plays, mistakes. Honey, don't you want to beat those b All right, I got good news, everyone, because the next film on this list is the 1976 family comedy, The Bad News Bears. This one was directed by Michael Ritchie, who's worked on other sports movies like Downhill Racer, The Scout, and Cool Runnings. It stars Walter Matthau as a hard-drinking ex-minor league pitcher named Morris Buttermaker, who reluctantly agrees to coach a Little League team known as the Bears. But after failing to find success with his team of misfits, Buttermaker gets help from a gifted yet feisty pitcher named Amanda Wurlitzer, played by Tatum O'Neill. At one point during development, Jodie Foster was cast as Amanda, but dropped out to be in Martin Scorsese's film, Taxi Driver. So Tatum O'Neill got the part and went to work with a professional sports trainer for several weeks before filming began so she could throw really good pitches. And while some of the ones in the movie were done by stunt doubles, O'Neill ended up throwing a lot of her pitches on her own. Take note, boys, Tatum O'Neill can throw. <laughs> hey, Joey, you hungry? You want my burrito? I wouldn't eat your burrito if you paid me to. Uh, go on. Take it. It's the first way to eat it. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna knock your lungs so far you're gonna have to take off your head. This very fresh film was followed by two sequels, The Bad News Bears in Breaking Training in 1977 and The Bad News Bears Go to Japan in 1978, along with a 2005 remake starring Billy Bob Thornton and directed by Richard Linklater. And all of them are coming in rotten on the tomato meter. There was also a short-lived TV series on CBS that launched in 1979 and ran for 26 episodes with Jack Warden as Morris Buttermaker and Corey Feldman as one of the players. Corey! But I guess it's hard to replicate the original sometimes, as critics know all too well. Like Slate's Charlie Taylor, who said, At a time when sports movies can't just be sports movies anymore, it's both startling and soothing to take a second look at Michael Ritchie's little league comedy, The Bad News Bears. And the overall consensus from critics is that the movie is rude, profane, and cynical, but shot through with honest, unforced humor and held together by a deft, understated performance from Walter Matthau. Field of Dreams. But baseball has marked the time. This field, this game, is a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good, and it could be again. Moving on, but staying in the state of not heaven, but Iowa for our next film, it's 1989's Field of Dreams. If you listen, I will read it. Written and directed by Phil Alden Robinson from films like Sneakers and The Sum of All Fears, this movie's based on the 1982 novel Shoeless Joe by W.P. Kinsella. It stars Kevin Costner and is an Iowa farmer named Ray who hears a mysterious voice in his cornfield one night saying, if you build it, he will come. So he reacts how any of us would in that moment. He decides to build a baseball diamond on his land despite everybody else in town thinking he's crazy. But sure enough, the ghosts of legendary baseball players begin to emerge from those cornfields and play on the baseball diamond led by Ray Liotta's Shoeless Joe Jackson. Funny enough, the person who provided the voice that speaks to Ray throughout the film has remained unconfirmed. But we do know that a young Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, who were teenagers when filming took place, were extras in a scene at Fenway Park in Boston. Ray, there was a reason they chose me, just as there was a reason they chose you in this field. Why? I gave an interview. What, what interview? What are you talking about? 
The one about Ebbets Field, the one that charged you up and sent you all the way to Boston to find me. You lied to me. Well, you were kidnapping me at the time, you big jerk. Well, you lied to me. You said your finger was a gun. Those guys are from Boston? I had no idea. We also know that Kevin Costner was not originally considered to play Ray because he had just starred in Bull Durham, which maybe you've heard of, and producers didn't think he'd be interested in another baseball film. So the role of first was offered to Tom Hanks, who turned it down before Kevin Costner did eventually get cast. The legacy for Field of Dreams has grown strong through the years, with the actual field remaining open for tourists to visit and play on. And they even hosted a regular season Major League Baseball game between the White Sox and the Yankees at the film site in August of 2021, playing on an 8,000-seat field adjacent to the original. It was pretty good TV. The Certified Fresh film was nominated for three Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Adapted Screenplay, which both went to Driving Miss Daisy. And the critics' consensus is that Field of Dreams is sentimental, but in the best way. It's a mix of fairy tale, baseball, and family togetherness. And you also get some, you know, ghosts in there. 42. Stay off. The peacock will be right out. Kill. Oh. Next guy up. You hit him right in the head, all right? No, 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 no,
Slow curve. Here's a swing and a bouncing ball. Doran has a chance to make the play. He can't get it. Clark digging around second. He'll make it to third easily. And the A's have runners at the corners. Doran didn't get much of a jump on that ball, buddy. Well, let's give him credit. At least he didn't spike himself. The certified fresh film was a hit at the box office and since has reached cult status as a favorite among many sports fans, not to mention professional ball players and announcers. It's often referenced during broadcasts, just a bit outside, thanks to the one, the only, the legend, Mr. Bob Uecker. That success led to two sequels, Major League Two and Major League Back to the Minors, but they couldn't match the success of the first and they're both rotten on the tomato meter. But the film's production company, Morgan Creek, has kicked around the idea of rebooting more of their classic films from the 80s and 90s, which includes Young Guns, Ace Ventura, and possibly Major League. Do I want them to do it? I'll get back to you. The consensus from critics on this is that Major League may be predictable and formulaic, but buoyed by the script's light, silly humor, not to mention the well-built sports action sequences and funny performances. A league of their own. Just see me play that game, and did I cry? No, no. Yeah! <laughs> No! And you know why? No. Because there's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball! No crying! What's the matter, Jimmy? What? She's crying, sir! I didn't mean to do that. Perhaps you chastise her too vehemently. Much like there's no crying while watching this show, this next movie gives us a reminder that there's no crying in baseball either. And that's 1992's A League of Their Own. The film is directed by Penny Marshall, who was inspired to do the project after seeing the 1987 made-for-TV documentary about the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. The film tells a fictionalized story about that league, which existed from 1943 until 1954. In the film, a publicity-hungry candy maker played by Gary Marshall funds an all-female baseball league, as many of the country's young men are off fighting World War II. Gina Davis and Lori Petty star as Dottie and Kit, a pair of very competitive sisters in the league. They're on a team with characters played by Madonna, Rosie O'Donnell, amongst others, and coached by Tom Hanks' Jimmy Dugan. Demi Moore and Deborah Winger were among those considered for the role of Dottie Henson before Gina Davis was eventually cast. But maybe it's a good thing that didn't happen for them because the filming of game scenes caused numerous injuries to actors, including Anne Ramsey, who broke her nose, Renee Coleman suffered a large visible bruise, and others got skinned legs from sliding, which I've done, and it's not comfy. The movie did well at the box office and with critics, and so a series based on the film launched on CBS in April of 1993 with Gary Marshall, Megan Cavanaugh, Tracy Rayner, and John Lovitz returning. However, only five of six episodes made it to air. But don't cry, because Amazon ordered a reboot of that very series in August of 2020. And just in case the Madonna tune, This Used to Be My Playground, gets you misty-eyed, that film's famous line, There's No Crying in Baseball, was voted as one of the top 100 best movie quotes of all time by the American Film Institute in 2005. Of course it should be. The critics' consensus for this one is that it's sentimental and light, but still thoroughly charming, and buoyed by solid performances from a wonderful cast. The Natural. Naturally, we had to put this next one on the list of the best baseball movies because it's 1984's The Natural. Directed by Barry Levinson and based on Bernard Malamud's 1952 novel of the same name, the film tells the story of a very naturally gifted athlete named Roy Hobbs, played by Robert Redford, a middle-aged nobody who comes out of nowhere to become a baseball-playing legend. The movie takes place in 1939, 16 years after Hobbs was shot on his way to a tryout with the Chicago Cubs. Now he's finally back in pro ball as a rookie for the last place New York Knights. And despite butting heads with manager Pop Fisher, played wonderfully by Wilford Grimley, Hobbs becomes one of the best players in the league and the team starts winning ball games.
Glenn Close, Robert Duvall, and Kim Basinger also star alongside Brimley and Redford in what was Redford's first acting role in three years following Brubaker and Ordinary People in 1980. And pun intended, it seemed to be a natural fit for Redford, who was a high school classmate of Los Angeles Dodgers great and baseball Hall of Famer Don Drysdale. The film was nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Supporting Actress for Glenn Close, and critics loved and have continued to love it. Gene Siskel said in the Chicago Tribune that being a baseball fan involves repeatedly experiencing exquisite pain and exquisite joy. Well, there's a lot of both in The Natural. And the overall consensus from critics is that, though heavy with sentiment, The Natural is an irresistible classic and a sincere testament to America's national pastime. The Sandlot. And finally, if you've seen this last movie on your list, you're never chasing a baseball beyond the fence, particularly one that houses a large dog. It's 1993's The Sandlot. The film was co-written, directed, and narrated by David Mickey Evans, who had written such films as Radio Flyer and Journey to the Center of the Earth before this. It takes place in the summer of 62, when Scotty Smalls moves to a new neighborhood and is taken under the wing of a young baseball prodigy and his rowdy friends who play baseball at a local dirt with a little bit of sand lot. They go on many a heartwarming adventure together, including running into some trouble when Smalls borrows a valuable baseball from his stepdad, which promptly gets hit over a fence with big danger lurking on the other side in the form of a beast. The film grossed $34 million worldwide upon its initial release and has since become a cult classic and fan favorite film from the 1990s. A direct-to-DVD sequel was released in 2005, with David Mickey Evans returning to write, direct, and narrate, and James Earl Jones is the only returning cast member. And another direct-to-DVD sequel, The Sandlot Heading Home, was released in 2007 and starred Luke Perry with Chauncey Lepardi reprising his role as Squints from the original, both of which performed poorly with fans and critics. But before you say you're killing me, Smalls, it was reported in 2019 that a television series with the original cast was in the works for Disney+, Plus, and I think that's a good thing. The critics' consensus for this classic is that it may be shamelessly derivative and overly nostalgic, but The Sandlot is nevertheless a genuinely sweet and funny coming-of-age adventure. And remember, heroes get remembered, legends never die. Well, there you have it. Nine innings and then some of baseball movie fun. That's about all the heat that I can serve up from my version of a pitcher's mound. So I'll step aside and let y'all take a swing at some of these fastballs. Thanks for checking out RT Essentials. I'm Mark Ellis. And if I can get back to Little League one more time, <clears throat> hey, no batter, no batter, no batter, no batter, swing batter.